part two of the presentation. We're going to discuss the various inputs for wind design. In the design settings tab, you have the option of generating wind loads following either the directional all heights method or the envelope low rise method. Both these methods come from ASC 710. The directional method comes from chapter 27 and the envelope method comes from chapter 28. For the directional all heights method, Shearwells completes checks for three design cases. Load case one from figure 27.4-8, which is described in the code with the image on the bottom left of the screen. The load case applies the windward and leeward loads to one direction of the structure at a time. As well, the software checks load case two from figure 27.4-8, which can be seen on the right which reduces the total load of, from case one by 25% and then applies an eccentricity. Case two is only applicable to structures which are three stories and taller in height. Finally, Shearwalls also generates loads based on the minimum load case described in clause 27.4.7. For the envelope low rise method, Shearwalls completes checks for three cases. Low case A from figure 28.4-1 and low case B from the same figure are both checked. The two cases are described in the figure. Generally, in case A, a lo loads are applied perpendicular to the ridge, and in case B, loads are applied parallel to the ridge. Again, Shearwells also generates loads based on the minimum load case, but in this case, the envelope low rise method, the requirements come from clause 28.4.4. The load generation site information is where you input the wind, wind speed and other important information used to generate wind loads. We'll go over the various inputs of the load generation screen in the next few slides. First input is the wind speed. There are two inputs, one for the basic wind speed and another for serviceability. Wind speeds would come from ASC 710 figures, which are, which are uh, pointed out here in this clause. Alternatively, we have provided a quick link which includes a tool that will generate ASC 710 wind speeds based on the input of a latitude and longitude or a specific address. The tool quickly reports the wind speeds that would be input into shear walls for both the main wind force resistance system and serviceability design. Just below the wind speed inputs, there is an option to specify the exposure for the structure, which comes from ASC 710. 26.7. You have the option of specifying either B, urban and suburban, C, open terrain with scattered obstructions, or D, flat terrain. Below that, there is an input to specify the enclosure of, a, of the building, which comes from ASC 710 26.10. You can specify the enclosure yourself or let Shearwalls estimate the enclosure based on the openings on the exterior of the building you've drawn. Below that, there are the inputs for the minimum wind loads. Shearwells uses the minimum loads specified in AC 710, but you have the option of changing the minimum load case depending on the location or specific criteria from the building department. Typically, loads generated with the basic wind speed do not govern the design. There is an option for taking into account topographic effects due to hills and escarpments. Figure on the right comes from ASC 710. The height input would be H in the figure, the length input would be LH in the figure, and from the crest would be the distance X from the escarpment or hill. Following inputs are only related to the directional all heights method. These inputs correspond with load case two from figure 27.4-8. The load case applies 75% of the basic wind speed pressure with an eccentricity applied. The inputs give you options to change the percentage of load as well as the eccentricity applied for the load if you desire. The method is only applicable to structures that consist of three or more stories. ASC 710 commentary for 27.4.6 gives you the option to decide whether the building can be considered as flexible. If you toggle the dynamic analysis checkbox, which will change the eccentricity, Doing this will change the eccentricity to an absolute value that you can modify. Finally, ASC 710 allows a reduction for the wind pressure for structures located at high altitudes. 
I would recommend reading the commentary C27.3.2 to gain more knowledge on the appropriate inputs for the setting. After the load generation site information window, you would move forward to the load generation screen. You can choose to only generate wind or seismic loads. Following is simply a zoom in of the wind load inputs. At the top, you have the options for only generating loads in certain directions. By default, shear walls will generate loads in each direction and design each wall for the worst case. Next, there is an option to generate loads as line or area loads. This affects how the resulting wind loads are reported in the log file. You also have the option for generating wind loads on certain portions of the, of the building. Below that, there are options related to only hip roofs, which come from ASC 710. And finally, there is a toggle to generate components and cladding loads. By default, this is toggled, but if you want to reduce the size of the output or do not want to check components and cladding loads, you can uncheck the checkbox. Components and cladding loads check the bending of the wall sheathing on the exterior and also check the pullout resistance of the nails uh, fastened, on the, uh, fastened to the sheathing.